it is now going to be the IU team versus the versus Purdue Black. Purdue on the blue side of here in game one. IUB on the red side of game two. It should be. My name is Andy Jokerstorm. Alongside me here is Aaron Yodroid Yoder. Uh, we already see the first bit coming out. That is by that is targeted against Dong Hoon. We're going to see a lot of targeted bans here in this tournament uh, towards different towards different players. Uh, as opposed to kind of the more meta picks that we make, meta picks or bands that we may see in other tournaments or you know in professional I leagues like the LCS, them. LCK, right. These and whatnot. Right. have done their research against each other. They they kind of are trying to understand the other team. They understand the, the uh, priority picks. They understand the priority bands that they need to be putting uh, in place. Yes. So, so we, that's a Darius ban as well. Yeah, that was a Darius ban again tor targeted towards Aerodactyl. Uh, you don't see we don't see very much Darius at all, but Aerodactyl does like that Darius, but is going to get it banned away. But we do see the Lulu ban as well. Uh, not necessarily you just targeted one. towards Apex, but also going to be able to just be that general Lulu ban. Uh, Same with the, what uh, Lucian. the Lucian, again, it, that is targeted towards XPLA. He is a good Lucian player, but well, again, no, uh, no, Lucian no. is one of those one of those AD carries that's kind of almost a sleeper pick at this point. He's starting to see some more play in the professional ranks, but it's, uh, it, it's still a slow pickup because there's still other champions like the Caitlyn, like the Ash, uh, like the um, Ezreal, that are seeing more that are seeing more prominent play. Although Lucian right. is starting to come into his own uh, after the most recent nurse to the other ADCs, we do see the Zac ban on the side of Purdue as their last ban. Uh, IU Blue, IU B, looking to make looking as for their final ban. It is going to be Cassidy. Wow, targeted against Sexy Hugging there. And you in know, the Cassidy is one of those one of those champions that can be extremely devastating if he gets snowballing, right? Because mm -hmm. once he gets snowballing, there's really nothing you can do about the damage. He can pop onto you, he'll hit you with a W, hit you with a uh, hit you with an E, and then next thing you know, you're dead. Yeah, exactly. We do see, again, that first pick, Lee Sin, and the, again, the rotation coming back around uh, the first pick, Caitlyn, on the side of IU. So we're seeing these teams place some high priority on the early jungle, on the early champs, uh, the early People pressure the in the jungle. Well. Yeah, exactly. But then also having the AD carry that can that can hyperscale and get themselves into the mid to late game right. uh, much stronger. So I'm looking to see probably some safe picks coming out of the side of Purdue as far as an ADC goes. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody who can also kind of sit back and be a little bit safer from the Caitlyn, who doesn't have to be right up in range to be auto attacked constantly. Mm -hmm. Now uh, this it, this is not going to be the actual Akali pick we did here on stage. Uh, that the Akali is actually going to be Nami. So it will be Caitlyn Nami in the bottom lane for IUB. Yeah, I, I could see that. I could see that being picked up. So, uh, especially because of the amount of disengage you can get with the Nami and the mm -hmm. amount of uh, also reliable engage with the uh, Tsunami, mm -hmm. it, it'll be really good. Yeah, being able to have that bubble, have the, have the tidal wave, uh, the engage, the disengage as well. We will see the bottom lane. They're locked in for Purdue, uh, for Purdue Black, the Ash I Karma. I like the Ash pick. Yes. I like the Ash pick being put against the uh, Caitlyn because you do have also a, a fairly reliable source of engage and um, a, a way to keep yourself safe with the stun, mm -hmm. right? Uh, pair that with the Karma, uh, you can make sure that Ash doesn't get touched. Yeah, not only that, but that is going to provide quite a bit of pushing potential and pushing power uh, combined with the Ash Volley, the Karma, uh, the Karma Inner Flame. It's going to be very tough for the Caitlyn Nami to be able to out push, uh, to be ma to be able to match the push of the Ash Karma, although they will be able to out sustain. So it's going to be a battle of the push versus sustain. We do see Oriana and Gragas locked in. That is most likely it's going to be the flex pick Gragas, as it can go top and it can go jungle, right. looking to counter out. Most likely going to go jungle, I would imagine, as they want to counter and out the top lane. That's a uh, support Oriana or a mid lane. That's mid lane Oriana. Mid lane Oriana. Okay. There's and the top lane Akali. Remember that Akali is Nami. Oh yeah, what's the deal with that? The it, it's a uh, they apparently uh, Dong Hoon did not have Nami. Ah, I so see. Okay. So that is okay. it's kind of the placeholder pick. Ah, so we're right. seeing right. again we're gonna see the hover uh, most likely again that Gragas is gonna go jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's leaving the top lane flex pick uh, or the top lane pick open for said Vulture to see what he wants to counter it, counter. Okay. Uh, the top lane pick. We do see the Fiora was banned away all last series, although more was a targeted ban. But Aerodact will make it himself that split push carry. We do see the Anivia locked in for hugging in the mid lane, and that will be the Fiora lock in for Aerodactyl up in the top lane. So now IU, Bloomington, IU, IU Bloomington B is going to have to figure out what they want to do against that Fiora. Do they keep the Gragas in? 
who then decide to go with something else, the Aurelia. I do like the Aurelia pick coming out. It, it's going to be something they can use to defend their fairies in Group 4, because what you have on the side of uh, Purdue is you have a very uh, run out of stuff. Yes. Right? Because you've got the Lee Sin who can fly in, shielded by the Karma. Uh, you kick somebody back, and then you pick them with the Fiora and the Ash. You know, and then you use Anivia to be able to zone everybody else mm -hmm. off. That way you can secure that pick. Yeah. And uh, in order to really save that... Yeah, again, we do see we're going to have to go back into the champ select as we did have uh, that Nami flex pick, right. or that, uh, the Nami changeover, excuse me, where we had the um, we had the Akali going in instead of the Nami uh, right. just to change everything over. So uh, we're getting everybody back into the, cha uh, back into the channel uh, and back into uh, – or back into the game, get everything going again, run so through the fixed bans. Yeah, it, it, they'll most likely just ban away if anything that's not opinion, being in use. I'll they may ban the same you. things just to run things through quicker. But everyone's going to pick their own champions. We'll get loaded up onto the rift here very shortly. But let's go ahead and talk about these, composi this, these compositions a little bit more uh, as we see everything come through. You know, like you said, Ed, Purdue is going to have... A, they've, they've got kind of that run at you, well, like no, you said, too. You, you've got the engage from Ash and the stun potential. Um, you, you do also have the flank defense. potential from Lee Sin being able to come in, uh, jump around and maybe get a flank off on the side, uh, land that Dragon Rage kick onto a high priority target. Uh, but Purdue also does, will have a high split push pressure coming in from Fiora. Yeah, and then on the side of uh, IU, you do have the Gragas, which is really going to be really good for that disengage against the Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. if, you can, if you can drop the cast before Lee Sin can actually get into the Dragon Kick, that'll disperse a lot of engage that Purdue has available to right. um, and, and then on top of that, you have the Irelia pick, which is going to be fantastic um, for peeling, mm -hmm. right? And then also being able to jump onto the Ash in the back, mm -hmm. um, who's, gonna, who's barely immobile, is not really able to get out a whole lot. It's going to have to rely a lot on the Anivia and the Karma to, uh, to kind of uh, run distraction, yes. right? keep her safe. Um, and that's, that's going to be fairly difficult with a Nami being able to throw as many bubbles and mm -hmm. try to trap up uh, either the Ash or the supports. So a couple of things we do want to point out first. Anivia uh, hugging there in the mid lane will have the teleport mm -hmm. on Anivia against the Orianna who's running cleanse. Uh, with, yep. the stuns, with the stuns available from Anivia, it's not exactly a bad choice, especially knowing that Ash will also have the stun. Karma has a root, so you've got a couple options so that you can cleanse away. Meanwhile, Nami is actually taking Ignite in the bottom lane. They're really going for that. Instead of the exhaust. Kills. They want to be able to... At the, well, the way, I, the way I can see it is that they want to be able to have a kill pressure just in case they can out-sustain the wave clear and the poke uh, from Ash and Karma. Yeah, that part is not a problem for them. They know that like in a lane, they're going to be able to stay healthy. They're going mm -hmm. to between uh, the uh, poke from Nami and, and like the, the, uh, the health transfer from Nami, it's going to be fine, right. right? And so the only thing they're worried about now is, okay, how do we transfer that advantage into early kills so that way we can actually, you know, get the snowball lead that way we want. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we will have to see if IU Bloomington can get that snowball or if Purdue is going to be able to split push their way to victory as we get loaded onto the rift for game one between Purdue Black and IUB. We'll be right back after the spectator delay loading up into the rift for game one of this best of three series. Don't go too far.
anything. They just wanted to see where Gragas was, where he was deciding to start, and that way Tugga can can figure out his jungle path from here, right? That way he can figure out, okay, am I going to need to be on the top side? Where is Gragas going to be in his jungle? Where do I need to avoid? Because um, that level two is, is kind of what he's what he's looking for out of Gragas, right? The um, the uh, flash uh, body slam engage. That's going to be brutal, especially for somebody like Anivia in the mid lane, who level two isn't going to be super strong. So uh, yeah, Tugga is trying to be a little more proactive and, and make sure that he, uh, he knows where he needs to be able to counter gank. Right. Yeah, and being able to either that counter gank or just know you that Nakamura not is going to want to farm up to try to hit level five, level six on the right. Dragas, Try to make some early plays on this. Piece. And you've seen since there in that first series they did a really great job of being able to pressure the map work around the map and get everything he's been such a popular pick well it bringing that early pressure it has been uh, has been a priority of these teams you know we're, we're not seeing something like the uh like a rengar come in or a graves come in for that early pressure we're seeing the lee sin who has more mobility and has a little bit more utility across the course of the game as opposed to the early pressure that the rengar brings for uh, the, early, the strength of the race, but a somewhat lack of mobility. Right, rather than just the straight carry potential, which is nice to see that people are going for these more almost supportive junglers. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them supports, but they're people who can who more uh, enable these uh, plays to be made around the map, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, the early shove coming in the bot lane, as we kind of expected, when you have a karma in the lane, it's it's going to be kind of hard to really stand your ground against that. She's able to put down so much damage under the minion Chevy under tower. Yeah, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a, something that Donkey may want to look at once he hits you know once he hits some of these later levels. Although Dong yeah, it's has, gonna be an easy gank opportunity. Yeah, Donkey though is going for the full clear Ooh. as opposed to Tucka who is invading on some red buff. Yeah, it looks like Tucka is gonna go ahead and start that, or he's he looks yeah, like he might be just waiting around. Yeah, he started it. Yeah, he's at least that red buff around the corner. Donkey does Ooh, not know it. Coming around. But here it comes. He's uh, is gonna find Dong Hoon with that ward. Maybe can he get the steal? He does! Yeah. Early early swipe from Dong Hoon. Tugga gets himself over the wall with that blast code. A little bit of a miss time from Dong Hoon. Uh, I think he could have waited a little bit longer, but I think he got a little bit nervous too, because uh because Tugga was backing off, and I don't know if he was completely sure what exactly was around that corner. No, but it's, it's a good invade and a good start from Tugga, that, uh, getting that free buff start on that steal. That was fantastic. The invade. That's going to put Tugga a little bit further ahead because he's going to get that extra bit of gold uh, from taking that buff and keep that buff away from Dong Hoon, so uh, taking down the experience. Though Dong Hoon, uh, he's not going to be hurting for experience too much because he has gone with the full clear. Uh, you see his, uh, his jungle, uh, the entirety of his jungle, has been cleared away. He went blue, then dropped the wolves and over to the raptors, which caused that blue, that red buff steal. However, right. later you will start seeing that experience difference because he's going to, if he wants to uh, catch up from losing that red buff, he's going to have to either start taking the rift scuttlers or he's going to have to venture over into uh, blue side jungle, which is going to be really difficult for him. He doesn't really have a whole lot of ways of reliable escape other than the, the body slam. So he, I, I don't know. He's going to have to start trying to make some sort of uh, gank happen soon. Yeah, and we uh, we do see both both agencies again taking the taking warlords instead of fervor. So they're going to be able to sustain themselves more once they get to the mid to the late game as opposed to bringing the, the extra damage from the the uh, fervor of battle, uh, getting the extra AD on the on the it's, uh, on the un, uh, enemy champions. Meanwhile, we get a big train up from the top lane. Aaron Dax is going in on the Volter. He's going to trade some more damage and gets that dash. Looks like he's trying to go for the kill. Rock. Sid Volter is going to be able to get uh, that stun down. Aaron Dax is going to ignite. Does not have teleport. Dog Noon, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, finds Short Arm. Short Arm has a flash away. The pump doesn't hit anybody. Tug is going to go in on the Dog Noon. Can he follow up with the damage? He's got one more auto attack, and the first one is going to go over to Tug. He's going to keep following through on the Apex. He takes quite a bit of damage. He had the Ignite taking down on him as well. First blood going over to Purdue. That is going to hurt Dong Hoon a lot. Having died there, he's not able to really get back into his jungle to farm up the way he would have normally been able to. Also, that gets a little bit of extra power over to Tugga. Oh, short arms. Ooh. Got hit by the bubble, got hit by the... Uh, by the Q as well. Aerodactyl is going to try to stop the damage coming from Sid Volter. Sid will take a turret shot for his efforts. Uh, but we do see, we are going to see a bit of uh, different traits and aggression here in the top lane, especially with Aerodactyl having taken a knight as opposed to taking a teleport. Uh, Huggy yeah. will we'll have the teleport, so that may be, they may be looking for that 1 3 1, but instead of the double teleport map play, they're going to just try to get Aerodactyl. 
Yeah, Aerodactyl kind of gave up a little bit of his kill pressure there by blowing the Ignite early and not getting the kill. It's going to mean that he can't really do a whole lot um, uh, coming up when when they actually have their items and there's a little more kill potential. He wasn't able to get the early kill, so the Ignite, did, it, it might not have paid off for him to use it so soon. Yeah, and the, that's something that they're going to be looking towards. And that Ignite will be up a bit, will be up fairly soon. But right. it, it, the top priority, if you're going to go with Ignite as a top laner on a carry top laner like Fiora, you have to put priority on that lane. And, when, and on top not, of that, he never actually hit the uh, critical point. He yeah. was going for the critical point on the backside that's still there, and he was never actually able to do that because Sid Bolter was actually smart enough to... Oh, meanwhile, though, he does hit that Ooh. one, though. It's level 6 when Sid Bolter comes out first. He's going to be able to, to heal up some of that damage. But a good job from Aerodactyl to... Harry, that stun coming in from Sid Filter. So yeah, fantastic. Meanwhile, short arms and Apex going to trade off back and forth. And Sid Filter again going in after Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl trading it. He throws down the great channel to bump. Sid Filter picks up the 1v1 very, almost fairly easily. He's able to pick up that kill. Uh, he does have that sheen, so that is quite a bit of extra damage coming in. Yeah, and it was the sheen on top of the corrupting potion that really cleansed that kill for him. Um, he was getting so much extra damage by being able to activate his ability so often and being able to apply the extra damage from the uh, corrupting potion. Ooh, it looks like Tugga is going in here for a bit of an invade. Yeah, he's, he's almost found Dong Hoon, but he's going to find a ward. At least be able to get himself out. Dong Hoon's going to have... Dong Hoon is recalling. He does not have flash up. So he has to get himself away. Yeah, Dongkun doesn't want to take that fight right now. He knows that he lost the first one. Um, I mean, it looks like Tugga already oh. has a Oh, they, they found Prism, though. He's going to get stunned up. going to take quite a bit of damage. Uh, Tugga is going to go in. Shockwave is going to land on it, Tugga. Oh, it's, it's, Prism has to flash away, but can he follow up? He's going to Shockwave himself out. Sexy Hugging can't follow through with the extra bit of damage. That was a beautiful outplay there, actually. The, uh, the Shockwave onto, the, onto himself with the flash over the wall and then to the, uh, the shield to make sure that he didn't take any extra damage. That was fantastic. Yeah, able to That could have been instant death for him if anything had landed. Yeah, Tugga did not have that that sonic wave up to be able to follow through, and was able to was able to juke and jive himself away from any other damage from sexy hugging. So a good play in the mid lane to keep himself alive. Although he is down that flash, so Tugga should know that is available and come back here in just a little bit. Aerodactyl again trying to trade onto Sid Bolter. He's got a big wave of minions with him, but Dominic is looking for that counter gank. Although he's sitting on a ward, so they know he's there. He's going to back away. Yeah, and you know, uh, that's actually been something that, that's been fairly impressive from Aerodactyl, being able to build up those minions. Uh, being able to keep those, those min that minion wave building, that way he knows that he can safely start shoving into Sid Bolter. Uh, he, he's lost those early fights, and so now he just wants to push him to the tower and start to roam a little bit. Um, and, and maybe try to get a little more map coverage. Uh, they haven't had a whole lot that's going in their favor. Right now, the gold lead is fairly tied up, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but one team is, but IUB is going to want to start uh, trying to move towards that, uh, that air drake. No, it's not, and that's they're gonna have to keep themselves moving, keep themselves going. Uh, we do see the blade of the Ruin keep picking up for X by lane. Meanwhile, Aerodactyl and Sid Bolter again gonna trade up in the top lane. The Ignite went down as well. Grand Challenge was issued, and it finally does come out. Aerodactyl's gonna be able to heal himself up, and Sid Bolter is looking to try to turn this fight. Can he land that stun? He's not gonna he's not gonna land the stun this yet, but just a lot of damage. Aerodactyl is gonna go down to Sid Bolter in that 1v1 and now that's giving two kills over to this Aurelia in such a short amount of time. That's protecting the uh, right? Like making sure that uh Aerodactyl is not able to get in and attack them. Soldiers doing fantastic to be able to manage those. Oh we're gonna be 2v2 the shockwave landing on a sexy hugger meanwhile Tugga is in on the prize of the cast is gonna miss everything. Dong Hoon is gonna get kicked away. Disengaged from the fight for both teams in that trade. Ultimate's missed and traded. That's about it. Meanwhile, Short Arms is taking quite a bit of damage. He's got the flash away. Ace of the Hole comes out, but Apex is going to pick up that kill. Xpele is trying to turn the damage back around, but well, that's a nice trade and a pickup here for IU Bloomington. And they are fighting themselves a bit ahead in kills and just a couple, a little bit ahead in gold early on. Got in the bubble, got 
got hit by the ignite, and then after that, it was just. No, and that's going to be that is a bit of a struggle. Now we are we are seeing the this the difference in starts here again. The Ash going for that Blade of the Rune King build. Hoosiers is looking uh, more towards uh, building the Infinity Edge first, but Aerodactyl is actually going to issue the Grand Challenge yet again on the Sepulter, but has to back away as Sid is a little too close to his turret. And once again, a missed opportunity for Aerodactyl. He is kind of struggling, trying to force something to happen. Never Hold on, Tugga gets hit up by the bubble. Yeah, he takes that TM man, trying to look for that pressure. The wall comes in as well. Sexy he is going to land that stun. Can't follow up with a whole lot of damage, though. Uh, it just has the tier and the sorcery boots, so it doesn't have a whole lot. Meanwhile, Sexy Huggy is going to get flashed on, and the body slam with the cast is going to knock Huggy back. Oh, the stun! Coming in from the Asher of Tugga will pick up the kill as Prism is lands that shockwave onto two. But the Ash arrow from downtown turns that fight around. Sexy Huggy gets stunned up, and Tugga follows up. Oh, Prism is going to turn that fight around. And Prism picks up the one boot. Oh, Prism picks up the main kill. It's a one-for-one -one trade so far, but the, the Ash Arrow from downtown started off that fight so well for Purdue. Tugget just gets caught a little bit too deep and gets taken down. Started with uh, Sexy Hugging not having that rim rewarded, right? So he started walking up, kind of like a stage one for the two points of rewarding over the back wall. Um, and it put that in depth had it not been for that Ash Arrow. Could have been the death, but it was a good, a good air to at least keep himself alive and secure that kill. Uh, help make sure that Dong Hoon is supposed to go down with the overaggression again from Tugga. Uh, try going in deep and just is not able to follow up with anything. Uh, it's another kill that does go over for Purdue, but it, it's traded over for the kill under Prism, who is uh, really going to be able to use that very well on the Orianna. Uh, Hugging needs to get himself into this game. He's got it. He's even in farm. Uh, but just does not have any other gold, so it's taking him quite a bit of time to get up to those mid game, uh, to those mid to late game power spikes that the uh, Anivia is known for. Meanwhile, Aerodactyl is simple to trade yet again. The grand, the grand challenge is issued, but Aerodactyl is going to go very low. Can he proc? No, he does finally proc it, but does not get the. Does not get the outplay. Tries to go under turret. Sid Volter does take that turret shot, but just cannot follow through with anything. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tugga is going to follow up on Apex Plus. He flashes away from the bubble. Gets the stun from Xpele onto Apex Plus. And that's Xpele going to pick up the first kill. They're so going to continue to trade. Xpele trying, trying to put some more damage up. And Dong Hoon walks under turret. It's another kill going over for Purdue. And they're just going to walk away from that. They did what they had to. But again, these one-for-one -one trades are going and, you know, are helping out Purdue. They're getting gold onto members that need them. The Ash, the Lee Sin. Uh, it's going to be a matter of keeping this Aurelia down. Aurelia has a lot of the gold. Oh, the stuff! The Shockwave lands on uh, lands onto Sexy Hugging. He does get taken down into egg form. Ryzen looking to try to finish him off. Can he do it just in time? No, Hugging is able to get out. He flashes away. Meanwhile, Tugga lands the kick, lands the Sonic Wave, picks up the trade one for one kill. Again, another kill going over onto Tugga. Hugging finally gets his egg popped. Yeah, it did. Again, we see the trade up in the top lane. Aerodactyl getting the wrong end of this trade. Yet again, Sid Volta just so aggressive with that Trinity Force. is just able to bully away Aerodactyl. Oh, that Aerodactyl doesn't have any items to be, uh, no. Aerodactyl, he's got the Titan Axe, and that's where he's getting as far as, uh, aggressive items. He does have, uh, the now Ruby Crystal, but at the time of the fight, I believe he had a Longsword. So, uh, it was a Longsword to tie in that, and he was out. That's not really going to do much against an Irelia that already has uh, cloth armor and a Trinity Force. Yeah, they they need to they need to think about maybe transitioning their bottom lane up into the top lane. Get the, get the two. Getting, I'm gonna go gank top. That's what they might be off of, but uh, 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 there's a lot of things that uh, Yeah, the top lane. Uh, yeah. Blue side. 
that goes down to Zip Volta. Yeah, that top tier one, Zip Volta with the uh, with the aggression that he has, the pressure that he the pressure that he's got, he's gonna be able to pick that up. Get the first turn gold over for IU Bloomington, and it is still a very fairly close game, about one, about almost about 2,000 gold uh, in difference between these two teams. But uh, it, you know, it's still early on that 2,000 gold is not going to mean a whole lot as we continue to move into the mid game. If that 2,000 gold stays where it is once we hit 20, 25 minutes, you know, it's good. Uh, it looks like there's four members that are heading from the uh, and what we're actually seeing, this is this is quite odd though. X Pele and Short Arms are being poked away. That turret is down very low. Apex Flux getting taken down though. Here comes Hugging and Prism off the backside. But Doug, who turns around, the shockwave lands on a Prism. Prism will take out Sexy Hugging. Nice turn from Dong Hoon to force that fight onto Hugging. Knew that the egg was down. I knew that he didn't have flash to turn the fight. It's now 5v4. It's going to be 4v4 as really is pushing down the mid lane. This turret could end up going down. Shockwave is down though. Blue turret will go down that tier 1. Uh, x Pelly gets forced away. Has the heal flash. Is still going to go down to the fight. Meanwhile, here comes the rest of the fight. Aerodax is trying to get out of Dong Hoon. He can't follow through. That's the double kill going over for Dong Hoon. He's going to keep me able to get away. Tugga gets the kick on the prize of it. Has the back away. Apex Fox flashes it. Tugga is going to end up picking up prize of Thanks to the minions, who just tries to go in and pick up that kill. Lee Sin follows through! Taga gets the Lee Syndrome, but picks up the kill, does not end up going down. The mid lane turret did go down, though, for IU Bloomington. Simple to pick that up. It's a two for two trade in kills, but they lose two turrets, and IU Bloomington secure their lead with that trade. Yeah, and keeping that keeping that pressure, they know that they can still probably win that 4v4. They traded 2 for 2 in the 4v4, so it's not necessarily a bad trade, but allowing the uh, the Sid Volter, who is far ahead, he's building towards that lane of the rookie as well, uh, letting him hang out that mid lane. Meanwhile, the Sid Volter is going to go in on the Aerodactyl back in the in the river. We did see Tugga go in on the Apex, but Apex got forced away. Sid Volter will pick up the Rampage onto Aerodactyl, and there's just nothing that this Fiora can do now that she's five kills down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that was, uh, I guess Tug would have been... <laughs> Yeah, sure. Our misses. They are going to be able to take down Prism, though. Uh, short arms will pick up that collect. That's unfortunate. They wanted that gold to quite possibly go over to Sexy Hugging for Xpele. Uh, meanwhile, though, we did see the Rift Herald getting taken down. That is going to go over again to Sid Volter, uh, just giving him even more pressure on the Sorelia. And they took it down just at about the right amount of time, as it was going to uh, despawn here in just a few seconds. Because they were like, well, why waste it? We don't really have to run up right now. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good ultimate. Uh, it will be up fairly quickly just to disengage to save the turret. But uh, now Sid Volter, with that, with the Rift Herald buff for the next 20 minutes, uh, he's going to be able to put quite a lot of pressure down. Meanwhile, Purdue is going to look forward to taking the dragon. Finally, 20 minutes in, uh, again it's the Cloud Dragon's so the team's just not really invested in it. Looks like it's going to be another cloud rank that's going to come up and respawn here in just a few, here in the uh, another few minutes. So again, not. Oh, Tugga, Tugga's going to hit, get hit up by the bubble, get hit by the body slam of the double stun coming up from Sexy Hunky, but he can't follow through with any more damage. Meanwhile, that top tier two turret did go down. Sid Volter is just there is not a whole lot that that Purdue can do against the split push Aurelia. Sid Volter really is kind of shoving him. Into the base. Uh, 
Yeah, the IU Bloomington, they're doing a fantastic job of playing around the map and using their four stack. They're doing a great job in, a, in the 4v1 split push situation. Using that Aurelia in the side lanes. Pressing the movement around. Apex Fox is going to get caught out. Our target could be caught out. The shutdown goes over the Sid Vulture. He's going to chase down. He will get rooted dead, but he's going to focus on the X Pele. We know Air Dagger tries to come in. Pick up that kill. Who's just been away on the bat line? He's going to be able to get one kill. Air Dagger finally picks up the kill. He's going to be in the dash way. The cast is going to secure a kill. But Thumb Who picking up another one. And it's a three for one trade so far. Here for IU, for IU Bloomington. Sexy Hugging, though, is going to be able to pick up Hoover, who's just Dom Hoon has to get away. The shield coming in from the Oriana, saving his life for now. But again, it's a three for two trade that goes over for IU Bloomington. But Purdue starting to pick up some kills, starting to try to claw their way back into this game. Meanwhile, trying to see something. Oh, Tugga is going to be able to get that red buff secure, or the blue buff secure, away from Sid Bolter. There's three members. The redemption is going to come out. Try to save Sid Bolter. No! Nice kickback! Tugga is going to shut down the Aurelia. Now they've got a 5v4 advantage. They're, they're looking to try to take at least vision control over the Baron. But they've got the main lead of IU Bloomington out of the game for another 30 seconds. And they are going to finally be able to take down their first turn of the game. Once you can take down, the, this is the only bad thing about having one person with most of the lead, as Sid Bolter has. If he dies, that's going to be more even for Purdue. They can take a 5v4 more even and try to win that fight. They, they can start to play around the map like they just did, take that turret. Uh, they didn't lose anything for it as well, so they're going to get some more standing, some more of that standing gold back into their pockets and continue to make their way back into the game. They just need to continue to get picks like this. Meanwhile, the Ash uh, Expelli does have the wave through. And Prism gets kicked back and gets followed through. The Shockwave won't land either. Expelli will pick up Prism on the backside. Meanwhile, Sexy Hugging is going to get taken down into the egg. Oh, Aerodactyl will slay Hoosers. Uh, here comes the redemption. Can it save anybody just in time? No, Aerodactyl will end up going down. Dong Hoon is going to be the next focus. That's a shutdown going back over to Tugga. Dong Hoon. Uh, did pick up the kill onto Aerodactyl. Meanwhile, though, Sid Vulture base racing 1v4 by himself, doing a fantastic job. He's so far ahead. He's going to continue to push Sexy Huggy. We'll fall back to try to defend. But that could be that could be the inhibitor turret going down. They do pick up the tier two at least in the mid lane to try to secure some gold. But Sexy Huggy can't pick up Sid Vulture in time to save that turret. So he will go down. That's a stun. A lot of taking damage from Sid Vulture. Can he go down? Sexy Hugging tried to follow up, does not have the flash just yet. Another to Sid Vulture. Can he land the slow? He gets slowed up just enough. Can Sexy Hugging continuing to try to follow up his flash? Not available. Sid Holt. Oh, Sid Vulture's going to be able to survive. Here comes Tugga. He's going to be able to take down Sid Vulture. At least the nice play from Sexy Hugging, from Hugging to try to slow down Sid Vulture just enough. Tugga will follow through to even up the kills. And look, Purdue, there's 2,000 gold back where they were just about 4,000 gold back just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, well, the big fight. Tugga lands the stock with the lands the resident expect. Tugga uh, picks up the kill. It's being sexy hugging uh, takes down Dong Hoon. Short arms will pick up Boozers. And that's going to lead, that's going to lead uh, Purdue straight into the Baron. Yes, Prism 
uh, did use that shockwave, so will not be able to clear uh, clear anybody away from that Baron. And it's gonna come off the, uh, from the yeah. Video. Oh, the shockwave actually was not used. Uh, did get taken. Did get used. But Blue team will be able to secure the Baron. All of a sudden, Purdue is fighting themselves back into the game. They are even in gold. They're ahead in kills. But that is the split push from Sid Bolter, bringing it right back, taking yet another turret. And that's more pressure being applied onto the side lanes of Purdue. See another cloud drake going over to the side of Produce. So they've picked up the they picked up those cloud drakes. The ocean drake will spawn next, uh, but that's some more map movement and uh, availability. This is going to be interesting. Purdue is at a five stack at the bottom, but they do have the empowered recall, so they're going to be able to get themselves back to the base just in time to save that turret. They're going to leave Expelle to push that bottom lane. Uh, meanwhile, Sid Vulture is going to push the mid lane. And it's going to be kind of a base race here. Uh, XPLA does pick up that bottom lane turret. Uh, they're trying to push down this, this top lane turret. Shockwave lands on to two. Aerodax is going to get blown up. Gets knocked back again. That's going to be another kill going up to Hoosiers. Meanwhile, Taga is going to uh, is going to get forced away. The Redemption is going to come out just to heal everybody up and keep the fight going. Sid Vulture going in on a sexy hug. And Huggy has to flash away. The Ace in the Hole will not take it down. Dog Moon is going to get focused. As Expelli came back, but that's a, that's what inhibitor going down for a turret. They're gonna take. They're gonna look to take this mid. Yeah, they're gonna look to take it. They've got the. They've got the, a couple minions and they've got the tankiness from Don Moon and Bolter. They can pick up that turret very easily. It's gonna come over into the inhibitor. They're looking to try to take it down. The stun only lands on the apex, so they can't follow up with that. Prism will be. They will be able to take down that inhibitor. They're gonna no. go ahead and try to run. They could have tried to take that uh that, that next inhibitor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's double super minions uh in those lanes. Uh, in top and mid, and even with Baron Empowered minions, it's going to be very hard for Purdue to clear them away. Not only that, the Baron buff will wear away here very shortly. It's, uh, it's probably got about 30 seconds left, so and Purdue has not really been able to do much with it. Uh, they they took one turret, and that's about it. They got they got out rotated by IU Bloomington. They were able to come around and, and use their advantages to take down the top and the mid lane and the inhibitors. Now we've got they we've got the siege coming in, the double mid the double superman is coming in onto the, the next minion waves. And so Purdue has to do what they can to try to defend this inhibitor to keep IU Bloomington away, but it's gonna be so tough because IU Bloomington still uh, I mean it's they're about to come down it's it's gonna it's gonna come down to a fight. Uh, they've got to be careful of, the, of being engaged on by Dom Hood or Sid Bolter. The arrow comes in on an Apex Plus. Is this the fight that Purdue wants? Tugga goes in. Shockwave lands on the floor. That is a massive knockup. Who's is going to take out Short Arms and get another kill? Aerodactyl is going to go down. Sid Bolter goes in onto the backside. Tugga is the last hope. No, he goes down. That's a triple kill for the Caitlyn. And that is going to be the game. IU Bloomington will take game one over Purdue Black off of a massive shockwave from Pfizer.
thing is, they weren't the same. Now, so uh, there, there, there were positioning errors that might have been played better for Purdue, but really it, it was all about the rotations for, uh, for IU, right? They were able to uh, look and see, okay, uh, Purdue is in their topside jungle. We know exactly where we, need to, where we need to be putting pressure because they can't respond. They were able to, if you, if you kind of notice, whenever... Um, Yeah, it was, and that the early game was definitely played off the back of Sid Vulture getting those early kills on that Aurelia. Once Aurelia has Trinity, of course, it is so hard to take it down and with the extra tankiness, with that attack speed, the Sheen passive as well, being able to dish out a lot of damage. Aerodactyl took a lot of fights there in the top lane that he probably shouldn't shouldn't have, uh, and Tugga was just not able to be there for either for the gank, the counter gank, or anything like that. So Sid Vulture getting that lead, then IU did a good job of using that lead rotating around the map, but playing the 4v1 split push, making IU come after the fort stack while Sid Bolter was taking another objective off of the side of the map. That is how split push is played. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean... Side of IU. It so, was. That, that it was. Hats yeah. off to IU Bloomington. They take game one. We are in a best of three situation, so we're going to take a quick break. Let the teams let the teams break That's and. Situation. We're going to oh, take. We're going to take, okay, okay. take a. We're going to take a quick break. Let the teams. Uh, let the teams map out their next plays for the next game. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game two between IU Bloomington B and Purdue Black. Hey, thank you. Stick around, guys.
Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to game number two between IU Bloomington's B team and Purdue Black uh, going up head to head in a best of three here at IU, at IU number one spring invitational. Again, my name is Andy Joker Sturm. Alongside me is Aaron Yodroid Yoder. We have the Cassidy band banned away from hugging again. Uh, they really, they really don't, don't want to, to, to no, get a hold of that. No, they that do not. Cassidy. We do not. We saw game one. IU, uh, IU's B team using the Aurelia that said Bolter played to their advantage and then playing around that map, playing the map yeah. around it. They're actually going to take the least sin away from Tugga, who... Uh, you know, that was that was probably a good pick. I mean, I don't think anybody really wants that on the no. on the uh, rift right now. And then we see the Aurelia also being taken away. Yeah. Those two those two champs really turn the games for each know. team. Uh, the least yeah. sin being taken away from... Uh, Leeson allowing Tugga to get Purdue back into the game and at least keep them in it. The Aurelia obviously giving uh, Sid Bolter and, and IU Bloom the uh, the Oriana band too because that was so effective mm -hmm. for uh, IU in the first game. They it were able was. to land so many shockwaves and uh, even some impressive escapes with the shockwave. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that Purdue wanted to go ahead and ban that away. But the Caitlyn being picked up here now for the side of IU. Which is uh, nice. They get that back again. They were able to use that really effectively, um, and uh, yeah, they were, who's just was able to put out a lot of consistent damage. Uh, Sid Volter, uh, they're all, again. They're gonna get um, Caitlyn on the side of IU, uh, so they can at least uh, get that pressure. The Shen is gonna come in for Aerodactyl and Karma being picked up as well. I really like that pick. Uh, it was. I, I think it'll be a lot more effective than. Uh, the Fiora pick, right? Uh, he, he's kind of afraid of Shen, of Aerodactyl is a little bit afraid, or sorry, their top laner is. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, Aerodactyl. Yeah, so Aerodactyl yeah, Aerodactyl's, uh, most yeah. likely going to pick up that Shen. Meanwhile, we do see right. Vi being picked up here for Dong Hun. Was banned away in game one. Swain is also going to get picked up for IU Bloomington. Again, another flex pick could go top, could go mid. Uh, but uh, Tugger looking to take the Gragas away. We'll take it away. X Pele will get his Lucian. That got banned away as well in game one. So we'll see if Purdue they just didn't have room for it. No. They didn't have room to ban it out. So they went, okay, no, what? We'll deal with it. We'll throw the Caitlyn. We'll see what we can do with that. Again, I, I do want to return to the Shen pick for Aerodactyl. Now he'll be able to have a little bit more uh, of a defense role. He won't have to try to make these gutsy plays in the top lane, which kind of got him in trouble in the first game. Yeah, he, so. he doesn't have to be too aggressive, can still function very well on levels and can function well from behind uh, and it's not forced to carry and can support the rest of his team and allow x Pele, allow Hugging to try to carry these fights and just uh, he can carry but he doesn't necessarily have to do the damage to be able to do the show. Right, right, exactly. And the amount of shove that's going to come out of the bot lane I don't think he's going to be able uh, he's going to be trying to make plays down there too often um, unless, unless you know, there is continual pressure on the bot side from, uh, from IU. He's probably not going to be able to make use of his uh, use of his ultimate or use of the teleport too much at least. You know, do, he'll probably just use the teleport just to get back to lane after that. Yeah, we do see the mid lane and the support locked in, but Nami again for Apex did very well in being able to engage this engage I like the Cinder pick. I love the Cinder pick. Uh, yeah. We have not seen a lot, we have not seen any Cinder yet, but it's a cha she's a champion that you literally, you, you hit two buttons and you can basically destroy anybody. You throw another Q out to have another orb, you, mm -hmm. throw, you hit the R and you throw down so many orbs. Uh, it's, 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 it's not notoriously called the genius button. Especially going into somebody like Lucian. Ooh, oh, yeah. it looks like we're... So this could be, this is going to be an interesting pickup. I think Vladimir does a great job in countering out the lane pressure mm -hmm. uh, from Cinder. It can also fool the ultimate. The problem is, is they've drafted themselves into somewhat of a low wave clear situation. Uh, yeah. Vladimir doesn't have, really have any safe wave clear. And uh, Lucian and Karma will not be able to really wave clear until they hit the mid game. So if uh, if IU can use that pressure against them, use the center wave clear, force the, uh, force the mini wave in, and then look to rotate maybe to the top lane to take down that Shen, maybe to the bottom lane uh, to force Lucian and Karma on the back foot. Which might be the best option because if Lucian and Karma can push as as well as it would seem, um, 
I mean, there's, there's going to be they're going to be open season for gigs. Yeah, it, it definitely will be. So uh, we've got these two teams with two uh, distinctly different compositions looking to do different things. We'll have to see if IU can take game two and move on in the brackets or if uh, Purdue Black can force a game three. We're going to take a very quick break to expect to delay. And we'll be right back with game two of IUB versus Purdue Black. Hey guys, welcome back to IUK Spring Invitational. I am Aaron Yodroid Yoder here with my co-caster Andrew Joker Sturm. <laughs> We're loaded up onto the rift here for game number two between IU Bloomington's B team and Purdue Black. To see if IUB can pull out the victory and get themselves to 2-0, move on to the next round, or if Purdue can force a game three. We'll have to see if they do it. They did get a couple picks that were banned away. Uh, XPLA did get himself that Lucian that he does like, but meanwhile, Donghoon got by as well. Uh, they also have the power of Syndra there in the mid lane uh, to be able to uh, to fight against the uh, against the Vladimir. It's going to be a back and forth game, it looks like. 
uh, as that last one was. It was very back. It was. Uh, we can expect that much at least because yeah. uh, both teams are, are looking still. If you look at the team comps, um, it looks like Purdue is still kind of looking to uh, be able to pull off those multiple man ganks, right? And and really shove in those lanes. Um, on the opposite side, you do have a high roam uh, champs like uh, like you have Kai and the uh, Syndra, right? People who are going to want to be traveling around and trying to make things happen other places. Um, and and so it, it's going to be essentially what you had last time, right? Yep. Um, well, granted, you don't have the uh, Lee Sin anymore on the side of Purdue, uh, so that's that's going to take away a lot of roam potential they have to be able to make those multi-man ganks happen. It's just going to be all on Tugga to be able to be in the right place at the right time, making sure the jungle pathing is is uh, on point, making sure he's there when his uh, when his teammates are ready to go. You know, yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how he handles this. Yeah, it's uh, there's high there's decently high mobility on both sides of the jungle. You know. Uh, Dragons can use that body slam to get over walls as he needs to. Uh, Vi can use the Vault Breaker as well to jump herself over walls to be able to get in better positions for ganks. Uh, there's a lot of single target focus also on the side of IU Bloomington. Uh, they've got the Ace in the hole, they've got the Unleashed Power, and the um, Assault Battery uh, from Vi. That's a lot of single target damage it, it going on at once. It is a high, is a high amount of single target damage. If anyone from Purdue Black finds himself out of position, it's going to be very easy. For, IU, uh, for IUB to be able to just immediately pick them off and force them 5v4, uh, but it could cost them a lot of resources to do so. So we'll have to see how these teams decide, how these teams will play it out, and if they can take advantage of the missteps or mistakes coming in from either side. Uh, basic starts for both sides. We did see that early board go down and get taken out by the Vi in the river, so they know, they know where everyone is starting. They know that there's not going to be, there wasn't an invade or follow-up on any side. Trade the dash comes in with Aerodactyl, but it gets dodged out by Sid Bolter. And this yeah, is something we actually did touch on a whole lot, is this swing up at the top lane against the rocks. Yeah, or against the, uh, the, uh, the Shen. Yeah. Um, so the, the great thing about Shen is he can build pure tank and still be very effective, right? So uh, we can probably expect first she's going to at least try to get some uh, the uh, no magic mantle. Um, to try to give himself a little more of those stats because Swain will end up shredding them So he needs to make sure that Swain's not doing the true damage right that, that he really wants to um, It's gonna be fairly difficult. They're not very expensive items, but he's gonna make sure uh, He's gonna have to make sure that he's, he's you know being reliable or reliably CSing and uh, Not being shoved out too hard. He's doing a really good job of trying to get into that turret oh, Hold on air dong who's gonna go up into the gate Ball breaker does land a flash away from Aerodactyl is going to keep him alive up in the top lane. Uh, that yeah. is actually something in that extended trade before Dominion came up. Was something that we did see. Aerodactyl was able to throw down that uh, that area where he was able to block away the auto attacks. Yeah. That is, uh, he, you know, uh, Sinwalter knows he's going to want to stay in that area to avoid a lot of damage. So he throws down that roof in the area to help prevent mm -hmm. any other damage from coming out and right. be able to disengage that fight. That's something that both of these, both of these two top laners are going to have to watch out for. Um, if that uh, if that root comes in, you know, Aerodactyl is going to want to have to dodge out of it, but if he dodges out of it too much, he's going to lose, uh, lose the effectiveness of the dodge zone uh, coming in from Shen, so that's going to be something they'll have to work on. Nice trade into the bottom lane on his short arms, takes quite a lot of damage, he has that headshot as well, so uh, again, the, the force out, the, there's a lot of damage coming in from the bottom lane and a lot of push pressure coming in from IU Purdue, so it's again going to be a matter of uh, can IU, oh, hold on, there's a Big shot, and there's a big trade from the top lane. And also, good. Get taken out. Tugga is going to come in with the, with the body slam on the Apex Plus. Expelling dash in the flash from Apex as well. Here comes Dong Hoon on the counter gank. Short arms. That's the first blood actually going over to who's They could turn the fight. That's a double kill with the big headshot going on. Short arms has to run. Yeah, short arm ha has to get away. Dong Hoon coming in right at the right time for the counter gank yep. to pick up Super Tank. That was great. See, what happened with Purdue is they chased a little bit too far, right? Like, they started getting the initial the initial gank down. They should have backed off and through. They didn't have any vision. Again, vision is dark on uh, on the lower blue side, right? Um, 
so they, they have, have no idea, idea where, where uh, uh, Dong Hoot is going to show up at. Oh, so so shoving in even further is yeah. not a great idea. No, Aerodactyl landed that big taunt and was able to put quite a bit of damage onto Sid Walter, who has to recall away. And again, That early game Shen damage. Yep, and not only that, but you, you did mention the Nomad Smith did pick mm -hmm. that up, and so is able to uh, is able to work away quite a lot of the damage that Sid Walter was trying to do. And and you're, you're seeing it now, the, the early pressure from the Shen is going to come out. The only bad thing about going up against an AP laner like Sid Volter, or like the the, um, the Swain, Swain, is that you're not going to be able to build up to your um, uh, to your Sunfire King uh, very yeah. very quickly. So you're going to lose a lot of the the wave pushing uh, that you can that you can't have with Shen, who wants this split push and have the wave push pressure from the from the Sunfire. Right, right exactly. It, it's going to put him a little bit behind. He's not going to necessarily be able to. Uh, have all of the time in the world to be able to get down to the bottom side to pull off the ganks that he wants to because he's not going to have the push pressure. But I, I think there is really no other option than to go with the no magic mantle because you can already see he's now winning those trades that he was previously losing, right? And, and especially because his uh, no auto attack zone um, just isn't very effective against somebody who throws out spells. It's yeah. not going to block anything. Yeah, so. not, not only that, Swain just doesn't have a lot of attacks being built in anyway, so he doesn't go down enough auto attacks really to make it work. Here comes the dash Ooh. in. He does land it onto Sid Volter, who, who misses the root. He threw down the root a little bit too early, and he was able to dash away. He didn't wait for that zone. No, he did not. We, we are seeing, though, that Hoosh, with getting that early double kill, getting the first blood and the second kill right afterwards, uh, combined with the 25 CS advantage. And they put, He's not got himself a BF sword. Yeah, and they're putting quite a lot of damage out onto the third as well. Speaking of turns, Sid Volter takes two. Uh, two turn shots as Aerodactyl is able to dodge out. So here comes Dog Hoot. They're looking for the dive. There goes the assault battery. They're going to uh, knock down Aerodactyl. Dog Hoot picks up the third kill here for IU Bloomington, and they are really in full control of this early game. Again, no vision really coming down from the side of Purdue. You can see that there are two deep wards uh, on the side of IU uh, in the top side red jungle, right? So they know exactly who's coming, they know what's going on. But uh, on the side of Purdue, they haven't laid any turrets, really, or any, uh, please fill in the word for me. No, yeah. Wards. Wards. There we go. Damn. Thank you. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, they, didn't, they haven't laid out any wards, really, so they, there, there's no way they can see anything coming. No, they can't, but they do lose, uh, they do pick up two turrets and does IU Bloomington. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's, that's actually going to put them quite a bit ahead. They're already 4.5k gold ahead of uh, Purdue. Yeah, and we're so eight minutes in. They're 4,000 gold ahead, eight minutes in. That is basically a, almost a full item ahead. I mean, yeah. we're seeing their the, uh, Rod of Ages being built up here for Sid Bolter. That BF Sword and the Zeal already picked up for boosters as well. And the great thing is the gold is also spread across the team, right? Mm -hmm. on, the, on the two people that they're really going to need, they need uh, Sid Bolter to really be building up that ROA. Like, he needs that ROA as soon as possible. And then they really need uh, Hoosiers to be rushing into, uh, into her first item. That way she can start being more effective in those team fights that are inevitably going to come. Yeah. Right. You, you, Especially now that there's turrets down. Yeah, you got to think about this. So the IU Blue does have two sources of damage. Here comes the the, uh, the State United from Shen. Sid Volter has to flash away with quite a bit of damage. Does get hit Ooh. by the taunt, but then comes Genius. But the Prince is not going to kill Aerodactyl just yet. Disengage from Taga. But Dom Hood is going to focus that, and they will pick up the kill onto Taga. He tried to disengage the disengage the fight, but couldn't make it happen. And they uh, get IU Blue to pick up yet another kill, and they're going to push into this mid lane turret. And they, they, IU moves it, they get themselves further ahead early on into the game. I know IU has been doing a fantastic job of making sure they know exactly where Purdue is and being able to kind of predict where those fights are going to start happening, right? And being able to respond to them quickly. That's how they've been able to travel around and pick up those kills for themselves. Because they can kind of go, eh, well, I think there's going to be a fight, a fight in the mid lane. You know, it's being shoved in a bit and the top lane is down. So they know that Shen has the availability to come in. <laughs> yeah, and now, not only that, they did pick up... The, they did pick up the the, the dragon as well, that cloud drake. Even more mobility coming in on the side of IU Bloomington. You know, when you've got a Vi who can just jump around basically wherever she wants with that ball breaker, uh, it's going to be it's going to be fantastic for Dunkin to be able to continue to provide pressure in these lanes, being able to move around. We do see a big invade. The rotation. Yeah, we do see the big invade coming in on the blue side jungle. 
Uh, we've got a four man, uh, four stack here for IU Bloomington. They already took down that turret. Louis just maybe looking to put down that trap line just to, to uh, prevent any kind of pressure coming in from IU from Purdue. And this is this is also the struggle Ooh. that Purdue's gonna get. Hugging is gonna get focused on. He will be able to pull out of the bubble. Tugga tries to go in and get the body slam, but he's gonna get blown up by Dong Hoon, who has finished out the warrior champ that third that third shot the third hit it just immediately deleted Dom Moon from the map it couldn't even use the cast to keep himself alive and now we're finding a 5v4 Xpelli throws down the cooling to try to clear out the mini wave they are able to do so for the time being but again it's another kill going over to IU Bloomington yeah and that was that was a really impressive use of of the amount of of uh, gold that they've been able to amass right they can they can allocate that to uh, right now uh if you look at Vi, she actually already has her uh, her jungle item completed right uh 11 11 minutes in the game that's completely complete now they're able to back um after they take down this turret uh who's just going to be able to pick up their first item uh sid bolter is also uh, already completed that roa so he's going to be able to start on his second item you know 11 minutes in the game is fantastic this is going perfectly for them. Oh yeah, they're, they're about 6,000 gold ahead. Again, 11 minutes into the game. That is quite a massive gold lead this early on. Like you said, the full item finish here for Sid Volter. Uh, Luz is just going to look to get his first item finished up. He's going to at least get the pickaxe, uh, getting some, a little bit more damage into his pocket. Uh, Prism is probably sitting on a decent amount of gold, just waiting, uh, waiting for him to finish up. Don Moon is actually going to pick up the Rift Herald buff as they do take it. And that actually might be good on him. Uh, I mean, he's going to be doing a lot of roaming around still. They're trying to uh, sort of out-rotate the other team, right? They're trying to out-rotate Purdue. Um, and so the fact that he's going to be running around generating those stacks, his first hit in, uh, when he initially dives in on a target, he's going to be doing a lot of extra damage on hit, um, at least for that, first, uh, for that first hit for the initial pop, right? So, I, I think it was a good choice to put it on him. They've got nothing to lose for. Oh no, not only that, but Sid Wolter's just not going to be able to use, uh, not going to be able to do much with it anyway, because no. he's not an auto attack based champion. He's, right. You know, he's a spell based, uh, he's a caster, so he's not going to be able to use uh, the above to full effect. Dung who flashes over the wall, hits the knockup as well, and goes on a rampage. This is what Vi can do. This is why M. Purdue banned it away in game one. Dung who just looks so comfortable on this Vi. I, I would imagine that he's probably also going to go for the Trinity Force as his second item because he's already. So far ahead. And also, if you want to take a look at this, uh, the ward line right now that has completely moved up for the side of IU, right? Uh, they are completely inside of Purdue's jungle right now. There's not a whole lot that Purdue can do to really keep themselves safe. Uh, they have a few wards that are placed, but most of them are already countered, so there's not a lot of a uh, vision advantage that they can claim for themselves right now. Yeah, there is not a lot. They already lost again the tier two turret in the top lane. They're just so far ahead as IU Bloomington. It's going to take a lot for Purdue back to get them back into this, and unfortunately, it's going to be a bit of a struggle because, like I said, they dragged themselves into a low wave leader composition. Vladimir in the mid lane, Shen in the top lane. The only one, the only chance you can really provide any kind of wave player are going to be are going to be the Lucian and the Karma. The problem is that Karma is not going to be able to provide very much anyway once she starts to get into the mid lane game. Not AP. And Lucian is falling behind. It's going with the Blade of the Rune King build first as well. So he's not going to have a lot of AD to back up the wave. Yeah, like, and that's that's sort of the problem with the with the way that they drafted, right? Um, I like the Gragas pick. I think it, it can be effective. But in this particular team comp, I don't think it works because you don't have yourself a very, a very hard carry. Oh, hold on. Tugga goes in on the dunk, but he gets the, he gets the pass back as well. Pick up the state United. They finally do get a shutdown. It's a nice tidal wave. It, it's going to catch it up. Prism will pick up Expelli. <laughs> Sid Volter has teleported into the back line, and it's just wrecking havoc. Aaron is going to get take down with the ace in the hole. Sid Volter is still trying to take that. He will go down. Tugga will fall. Apex, the bubble land will not land as Hugging is going to pull that away. It's a four for two. And again, Bloomington is I continuing to get themselves ahead. They do finally get themselves a couple of kills, but they're almost they're down almost ten thousand gold at this point, and it's gonna be the bottom lane turret. And see, this is this is the danger of letting a pit comp snowball on you, right? Uh, because that's exactly what IU is running. They they buy, they've got um, the Nami and they have Syndra, all who can just pick you up and then put you right back down in the dirt. 
Um, and when you when you allow those pick comps to really start rotating around you, they're gonna start taking towers. They're gonna start taking objectives. They're gonna start taking anything from you. And at, at some point, you can't walk into the jungle with less than three people, right? Because right? they're going to be there, and you can't have that. They're finally clearing out some vision, though, which is nice. And not only that, I mean, like Tugga did find a, the start of a good pick. They found Nogun, and they took him out of the equation early on. The problem yeah. is, is the problem is, Sid Vulture had a fantastic teleport in, and they were just and Sid Vulture was untouched in the backline, just letting that uh, letting his ultimate just go go wild, picking up quite a lot, doing quite a lot of damage, and continuing to heal himself in the process as well. Well, because they've gotten to the point where Dong Hoon isn't necessarily the problem. Dong Hoon is very strong, correct? But he's not the only problem anymore. Uh, maybe 10 minutes ago, it would have been good to pick up Dong Hoon. Hugging finally does get bubbled up, and he can't even fool. Sid Volta just deletes him off the map. That's probably a little more physical contact than Sexy Hugging was looking for. Yeah, he, you know, <laughs> you, I mean, he might he might like a little bit of hugging, but that was right. that was a little bit too much. Now, it's a right, five, right. It's a five-man stack here for IU Bloomington. They're looking to take down this mid lane turret. The cooling will come out to try to clear some of the minions away, but x has to back himself away. He can't clear the minions just from the sheer pressure of Prism and that Unleashed Power, which is still available. He not use it in any, in any kind of fight or that pick onto the Vladimir. Which, which, you know, uh, Vlad Vlad picked, picked a Vladimir, Vladimir with the pool available. He got right. bubbled up, got CC'd, and just got taken down. Yeah, it, it just seemed like he was, uh, he, at this point, it, you could probably assume that nerfs are getting to him a little bit. And so, uh, hopefully they can make a little bit more better use of the Gragas to try to pull somebody out, right? Try to pull off one specific target and then get out, right? Get single picks, try to build yourself up, uh, farm up, you're now pushed back to your uh, base, so you can, you have some opportunity to sit back and farm up, right? Wait it out, try to push it to, you know, 40 minutes in, because we're only 17 minutes in right now. Yeah, the longer that Purdue can go, the better it's going to last, the better it's going to be for them. The problem is, is that they've lost all of their turrets leading up to their base. They only have three inhibitor turrets and the next turret up. They don't have a whole lot of vision in their jungle. They're starting to get some, but they, you notice how they have to roam as four to get the vision. If they continue to do this, uh, IU Bloomington may notice that and could play around the rest of the map. Uh, you see four players, you see four members in one side of the jungle, they're going to rotate around to the other side. Now what they are, what Purdue is doing to kind of help prevent that is the split push from Aerodactyl. Yeah, which is really nice. I mean, he's already picked up the tie map, which oh, is why he's Oh, Tug of Flash is in, but gets taken Whoa. down. Who's just got a rampage? Uh, if the teleport did not come through, uh, Prism is going to take that short arm. x has to dash and heal away. There comes the ace of the whole dog moon. Doesn't care about the ace at all. He's just going to take down x -Pelle. It's a 3 for O so far. It's a, it's a, I was a greedy flash to try to make a play happen and couldn't follow it up. Meanwhile, Dom Moon is going to go in on the Aerodactyl. He's going to get bubbled up. He's not going to get rooted down. He's going to get stunned. Hoosers is going to go unstoppable. Sexy Hugging now is the last one alive. Has to finally pull the wave. Sid Bolton is just going to follow him up. And with Hoosers on the back, he's following him up as well. That's the double kill. That's the ace. They're going to take down the inhibitor first. They're going to take down the inhibitor. They could they look could to push it on the next. Yeah. I, I, it's completely possible. They do have 24 seconds, all uh, 24 seconds and 13 seconds on Aerodactyl and Sexy Hugging. Uh, three members of uh, Purdue are up, so they're gonna have to go ahead and back off, I suppose, and you know, try to see what else they can take down around the map. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was very well executed from IU. Uh, a little unfortunate from Purdue. Yeah, the, the inhibitor falls sub 20 minutes. That is how far ahead IU Bloomington yeah. is right now. Well, and you you saw in that fight, right? Uh, so right now. Tugga doesn't even have a full item built besides his jungle item, right? Uh, he's not the tank Gragas that you're really looking for. The one that you really need to dive in and actually uh, be the disruptor, right? Um, and Hold so, on. Air Dash flashes, flashes and dashes, but can't Ooh. find the group, can't find the taunt, and he's going to get focused down. Who's this? This is wailing away. He goes godlike. Just takes down Aerodactyl. Again, I blew, or Purdue trying to force the fight to happen. Meanwhile, Sid Volter. Forces the pool out of sexy hugging. Meanwhile, back in the jungle, Tugga and Dom Tugga and Dom are brawling. Dom will take down Tugga as the cast comes in to knocks him against the wall, but can't save him. That's another two kills going over from uh, IU Bloomington. Yeah, and if, uh, if we take a look at uh, at Tugga's items right now, right? Um, he, again, he's only sitting on a Kindle gem, right? Uh, 
That is that is not enough to stand up to Dongun, who's just going to shred through your armor and start doing so much true damage to you, right? Because um, right now, I, I mean, Dongun already has his uh, tri Trinity Force. There's not a whole lot they can do to stand up in fights anymore, and that's been the problem. No, there's not. Prism did throw out the Unleashed Power, trying to take down Short Arms. Um, could, there's a second inhibitor. Yeah, could take it down. Second inhibitor falls the top turn. The top inhibitor turn looks like it is going to fall as well to Sid Volter, and Purdue they just pushed back into the base. There's just not a whole lot that they can do. This is going to be the third inhibitor falling down in a very short amount of time. IU is just running roughshod over Purdue at this point. Uh, they they are they've been in full control of the game since the beginning. They were able yeah. to move around the map. They were able to take kills, take take uh, objectives, and just do whatever they wanted. And it just was so tough for Purdue to try to do anything. You know, and where this starts, it starts with map control, right? Uh, they they can they remain in control of the map the entire time. Superior vision and superior mobility. Right, being able to see exactly where Tuggup is going to be, say, okay, well, we need to be making plays here, we know where they're going, we can cut through. And and they were just able to snowball their advantage from there. When you give Vi that much advantage, she's going to be able to, to completely wreak havoc on your into all your lanes. Yeah, and not, not only, like, Purdue did find some good picks. Tuggup was trying to make some plays happen. The unfortunate thing is Purdue were just so far behind in both CS and kills that... It was a little too late. It was, it was, it was a little... It was a little too late. They, they made some good plays trying to make something happen, but they ended up getting forced into team fights that they didn't necessarily need to take. Purdue right. is back on the back foot. I wouldn't say they were forced into them. There were definitely some decisions made. Okay, there were some decisions made. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Purdue now forced back into onto their next turret. So there's double double super minions coming in on each side, and the Baron buff will be coming from the rest of IU Bloomington here in just a couple seconds as they start to make their way down the mid lane. Uh, Purdue's got to make their last stand here. Other. Yeah, this is this is where this is where uh, the the rubber eats the road. Yeah, they they've got to try. Donghu tries to go in on the air next, but that turret just gets shredded down. Sexy Huggy is down to third HP. It gets straight down. He can't even pull out of it. Who's just goes legendary? Here comes the here comes the redemption as well. Hits four members. Aerodactyl's not quite gonna go down. Donghu stays alive from the, from the, the next uh, the bouncing turrets and they're just looking for the kills at this point as super minion upon super it's minions mini wave. take down the nexus a triple kill ends up going over on that the was side. fantastic from the side of IU. Uh, yeah, IU Bloomington. That was fantastic. Congratulations. They they played around the map very well. They were able to take uh, take full control, full aggression. They used the map play, the map presence, the, the vision control, as we talked about, uh, to their advantage. And they take down Purdue, Blue, or Purdue Black in two games. So they'll move on to the next uh, the next round here on the winner's side. Again, Purdue Black not out of it yet. They move down to the lower bracket, but they still have a chance uh, to make the run back to get themselves back in to uh, in, you know, get, try to get themselves back into the, the finals. finals? Yeah. yeah. We'll have to see if they yeah, can do we'll that. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. That was, there was just not a whole lot else that we could say about that game that has already mm -hmm. been said. So we're going to take a very quick break. Uh, we're going to take a break and move on to the next grouping, uh, the next mm -hmm. best of three. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.